Hello guys, this is Code with Vlad. This is the second part of the Easy Peasy tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to mutate the store, how to create the actions. I have some people requesting me to make a comparison with React, sorry, Redux Toolkit, but that will come later. So let's just focus on Easy Peasy for now and let's do some uh, nice stuff with this framework. So um, in the last tutorial, we have um, created some getters that were getting the name and the course from the store, from the Redux store using Easy Peasy. So now we want to create a mutation logic. So what if we want to change that name and what if we want to change that, um, that paragraph? Let me actually zoom it a bit. So the way you mutate the store is with actions. And usually the actions, I name them with set. So if I want to change the name, it will be set name and that will be of type um, action. So here it goes. I'm using uh, TypeScript, so I need to declare the types and everything. Obviously, if you're using JavaScript, you don't need to do that. Uh, so um, action. So the action will refer to this, and that's all we need for now. So let me write the code and explain you a bit later. Now model is complaining because it says that the set name is not there. We need to add that set name. Okay, oops. And it will be an action function. So action and also it is imported from easy peasy. This, however, you will see that in JavaScript as well. And the action references this, which is the state. And we can basically modify the state as, as we want. So state dot name is equal something. Obviously, if we want to modify uh, this state, we need to pass a value we want to replace the state by, I mean, I mean, at least this variable. So we also need to provide a payload. And it can be, uh, you can name the variable as you want. Sometimes you don't, um, you don't need to pass a payload, or you want to use something else, you would you would name it like that. But we'll see that with thunks. For now, payload and state dot name is equal payload. It won't work because here we say that we only accept one argument and it's this. So we need to also define a string here saying that, oh, we also need to accept the payload, which is a string. Okay, so that seems good for now. Let me save it and it is compiling well. So now we're going to create a setter that will allow us to modify the state. Right now it's still hard coded, it's still there. Let's create a, a setter to actually trigger that action and modify the state. So let's come back to the app.ts. Um, an input in that case will be will be a good choice. Um, input. Let's just uh, put a placeholder. Uh, change the name. Okay, we have we have an input here. Obviously, it's React, so we need to. We need to um, create a state for that, uh, for the input. So um, name, set name. Actually, set name is not a very good choice of variables because we already use set name here. So um, let's name it input name and set input name is equal use state from React and it will be an empty string by default then we say that the input value is input name so by definition a blank and on change so when we change the input value we set input we call set input name with the event event dot target value so basically every time we change something it triggers an event and that event points to that input and we get that and we get that input with target and we get the value of the input which is basically e.target.value that's a standard way of doing it in react now um, now we actually can actually change it it should work okay at this point everything is cool we just need to import the hook the action hook so it's uh, done the same way that we done it here. It just needs to be a bit different. Use store actions 
and it's the same store, so we export the store. And then here we will only see the actions or the thunks, by the way. We will talk about that later in the next video, but here's the action set name. And it does not work. It does not work very strangely. Let's see why it's not working. <laughs> Oh my god, why it's not working? Um, use store action. Oh, of course, yeah. I'm using it from easy peasy and not from the hooks. So every time you import the hooks, it, it needs to be imported from, um, yeah, from our custom hooks, our typed hooks. I think once you do it once or, or two times, um, VS Code will remember that it's from the hooks that you want to import it. So it will help you store actions, store actions from the hooks, not from easy peasy. And then we should have the autocomplete and we have it set name. So this is the action. This is the thing that will change our state. And um, and basically, oh, we also need maybe a, a um, submit button. A button submit. Okay. Hmm. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, that's that's it. And yeah, we can leave it like that. Okay, now we uh, we can either do a unclick event directly here. We can do it. I mean, unclick. So when we click on the submit button, we call set name, which is our action to change the state, and we provide the string that we want to replace the name by, and it is it is what it is input name. Here we go. So Vlad, and we can submit, and it will change. And we can go in the, um, the state explorer and you see that, oh, we called an action, state name, and we replace Vladimir by Vlad, just text, and we can replace it basically by, by what we want. So this is how you do it. You, usually you would do something like that. You would, do, uh, you would create a handle, function handle submit um, handle change name because you might want to create additional logic here uh, before submitting the name and uh, like, I don't know, showing a model or maybe after that showing a model or doing something. And it will be really messy if you do it here. So you can do something like that and call the handle change name here and it will do the same thing. Dead beef. That's um, that's a CS joke. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. It's a bit shorter, but I like to keep everything organized. Next video will be about thunks. So thunks are like actions, but they call other actions. While the action changes the state, like that, the thunk will call another action, which will change the state, or it can do something in the background, like um, fetch some data from an API or something like that. Also very important, thunks can communicate between different stores and that's we're going to see it in the next tutorial so um, thank you for watching and see you next time